Namaste. Namaste. Hi, welcome to the Shaman and the Mermaid, and we're out here on Mallorca, Spain. Oh my gosh, we drove out here and there's this road going through the most magical mountains out to the sea and the most narrow mountains with, we'll put it in the video, little goats everywhere, brown goats. And we, little bikers everywhere. Lots of people enjoying the and nature. there had to be a lot of merging of energy. Uh, we had to come together and let people pass. Maybe it was their turn, maybe it was our turn, maybe it was the goats' turns. Um, which leads us to our theme this time. There's a lot of uh, energy pushing for the idea of merging and sharing and coming together in the middle ground. Kind of a float over from our last talk. And so we came up with the Rumi quote. Um, love Rumi, gotta throw him in every now and then. And he says, out um, beyond the ideas of wrongdoings and right doings, there's a field, I'll meet you there. And we thought that was completely appropriate for this time as we're coming up on the big election during this report on November 5th. And there's a sometimes a lot of pull between my ideas and your ideas. And we have to find that middle place and we'll meet you there in that field beyond wrongdoing and right doing. But we'll build up to that day. We first kick off on the Aries full moon. And what do you think about that? Well, the Aries full moon is um, bringing out this ram energy. And we saw a little goat ram friends everywhere. We uh, have been studying lots of different astrologers. And one of our favorite astrologer philosophers is Dr. David Frawley. And he broke down Aries Mars energy and also Venus energy, which plays a lot in this report. And um, it's been one of my most uh, favorite ways of interpreting Aries energy. Aries, when it's in right way, seeks truth. And so does the energy of Mars. It looks for what is ultimate truth, what is in alignment with the universe, or you could say it seeks love. And Venus and or um, Taurus energy is devoted to love or puts its heart towards that love. And so when the masculine and feminine come together, it's seeking love and devoted to love or truth. And so this Aries full moon is seeking truth or what is true or trying to know ourselves. And with all of this energy that Katrina mentioned of merging in the election and the portal is open for Sawin and All Hallows Eve and the souls and the um, spirit world are coming in, there's a lot of potential for weaving and merging. But just like on our road that we are on, it's patience and letting others with their own path have their gentle way in without getting irritated at them. Yes. So that's October 17th, the truthful seeking moon of Aries coming in. And then shortly after that, the sun will move into the sign of Scorpio, which is all about merging. That's the big energy of Scorpio. And that's on October 22nd. And I give a shout to my mom on that day. Happy birthday. And so that Scorpio um, energy will then flavor the rest of the month. As um, we've said, it's all about merging or coming together. Um, sometimes Scorpio has that sting that if, uh, like little kids when they're playing together and if, you know, they're playing zoom, 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 then all of a sudden somebody zooms too hard and they're like, sting. So be careful of the sting coming in. We're wanting to keep that patience, that nice flow of energy, much like the waves lapping on shore, not letting our stinger come out and get irritated with little things. Just keep letting people merge. You know, I think they call it the you know, zippering when you come into the merge ramps, let people zipper in, not, <laughs> uh, not being impatient about it. So that comes October 22nd, Scorpio, um, happy birthday to all the Scorpios, not just my mom, by the way, on that day. And, and then we keep moving on. Go ahead. We have seasonal astrology on October 31st slash November 1st. We have the midpoint between fall and winter. The old Celtic name for it is Samhain. We know it is All Hallows Eve or Halloween. The day after that is Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead, All Souls Day, All Saints Day. And what do you have on that for One the of my favorite holidays. And as Michael mentioned, this is kind of when the veil lifts or the uh, merging of the other world can come in. 
It's a time where we honor our ancestors, um, the souls and the saints who have passed before us, and listen to what they have to say and be connected to them on that spiritual level. I love making an altar at the house, kind of our own rendition of Dia de los Muertos, where we put all of our ancestors out and um, let them come through and sit with memories and sit with even just the quietness to see if there's something that comes along. But the merging of these two worlds on that day, um, highly recommend taking some time to um, honor your own ancestors in whatever way that seems right to you, perhaps making the altar in the form of Dia de los Muertos, but also um, in tradition of perhaps the Catholic holiday of All Souls, All Saints Day, and just lighting a candle for the great ones who have come before. And with that, it's also the new moon, the Scorpio new moon, so it's very potent energy, November 1st. That Scorpio again, which is a water sign, and so sometimes there's a lot of emotion that comes up. That new moon energy is asking for us to start a new beginning, and maybe it's around um, being able to merge more or share more or let go of our hard nose a little, softening some of the edges, kind of like the edge between the shore and the water. It softens into sweet sand. Maybe we can dissolve some of those things like the sand does as well. It's a good time for that uh, reflection too as um, old self merges away or lets uh, flows away, washes away, and a new self comes in on those new moons. You know, always shedding a skin. Snake energy is very much Scorpio energy as well. And same with eagle. They have, scorpions have, uh, Scorpios have three different animals, if you will, that come with their sign. The eagle, the scorpion, and the snake. So all those um, animals have that energy right now. And Ironically, the eagle who flies so high is, you know, the predator of the snake. So they are in two making a way to that merge. You know, how can they be symbiotic in their relationship to one another at this time? Like put away that natural tendency to want to strike as we tend to have. We were talking about that with some friends of ours. Is it human nature to want to smack or to slap or to fight or to, or is this a learned trait? And, um, you know, I'm not here to say, but going back to the quote, between the wrongdoings and the right doings, there's a field, let's all meet there. Whether it's our human nature or something that we've learned um, through survival methods, perhaps we can put down some of those old ways and merge into a new way of coming together and being in collaboration with one another rather than in competition with one another. I hope so. Yeah, right? November 3rd is a pretty potent day. The days leading up to the U.S. election have a lot going on, but these two <laughs> jumped out at Katrina and I. One is uh, Mars will oppose Pluto. And then a few hours later, Mars will slip into the sign of Leo. The Mars uh, opposition to Pluto is very potent because Pluto is at the very last degree and very last minutes of the sign of Capricorn, where it had retrograded backwards and then is slowly passing back into the sign of Aquarius. This will be goodbye to Capricorn for the next 250 years. But it, for a country, for a people, for an individual, this is a very intense point to be at. And Mars opposing it is the truth seeker. Pluto's the soul. Oppositions aren't good or bad. It's like looking in a mirror. If this is done harmoniously, the persona looks in the mirror and sees that it's a soul, that it's Purusha, Atman. Um, if it doesn't go well, then we have the little ego self trying to pick up swords and be like, you're right, we're wrong, there's no field, forget about it, let's fight. And interestingly, Mars and Pluto, Mars used to be home sign in, uh, or Pluto used to, Pluto and Mars used to both be home signs in Scorpio. Now it's just traditionally Pluto and Mars is over Aries. in Aries. But um, they both have a lot of Scorpion energy. So again, put the stingers away, find that 
coming together and merging energy at this time. And that Mars into Leo, um, it's the warrior. Mars is the warrior moving into a very um, outspoken sign where it likes to speak its mind. So that's watch, watch that temperament a little bit on those days coming up to the election. And then we have the actual election day, the 5th of November. And on that day, we have the moon squaring Neptune. I don't know, we don't often cover moon aspects because the moon moves quickly, but because this is a day of interest to people, we thought we'd bring it forth. The moon is your subconscious energy, your memories, your child, your inner parent. Um, it can be your high self when it expresses love and connectivity. And Neptune is the spirit, but it can also be delusion. And it can be like a tidal wave coming along and suddenly wiping everything out and being like, oh my God, I don't want to say that this is a bad or a good thing because this is what we call a third quarter square. The moon squared Neptune once came around to an opposition. And third quarter square is usually when we can have the opportunity to resolve and harmonize something, though there's still conflict, but you're choosing to go forward and weave to a higher plane of awareness. Choosing to go forward to a higher plane of awareness. Just want to repeat that because that's a good thing to be uh, having in the back of our mind. If things get difficult, there's a field beyond the wrongdoing and right doing. We'll meet you there. That's the that's the idea at this time is to always keep the vision on the big picture or the farthest um, highest ideal of collaboration, peacefulness, coexistence, and harmony. You know, when we get into these really conflictual points, and you know, honestly, of, of course it's going to have some tug of war. Families fight with each other around these times of politics, and good friends break up their relationships because of these times. I've even known some marriages that, that have fallen apart because of political things, and I'm um, just keep looking like the eagle's perspective that beyond all of this duality there's a, a bigger plane for our existence and we just need to keep our eye and our mind on that at this time. And as a little plug after the election time we're having a retreat to Taos, New Mexico. Yes. Thanksgiving Day weekend it's a nice time to come into community and go down to be in the magic energy of Taos and the Ma and the mountain there. Merging together for uh, a meal that we can share and speak our minds together in safety and in peace and, and loving kindness. So join us in Taos, New Mexico. And then we're here um, researching Mallorca and uh, we're bringing people here in 2025. So keep that on your radar too. We'll come to Spain, check out Valencia and Mallorca. Well, that brings us all the way up to the Taurus full moon in November. So we'll meet you up then. And until then, have a beautiful time and practice merging. And remember, beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there's a field. We'll meet you there. Namaste. Namaste. Shri Ganesha, Shri Ganesha, Shri Ganesha.